Hey guys, happy new year. Welcome to the first Q and A of 2017. One of my goals was to do one of these on the first Tuesday of every month, which means that I've already failed. Hmm, let's get started. Have you ever modded any of your guitars? If not, what would you wish to do to one of your guitars? Yes, I love modding guitars. Taking a stock guitar and making it more of my own is so fun. My ESP Eclipse was more or less perfect the way it was, so all I did is throw in an extra 9 volt battery for the 18 volt mod. On my Epiphone G400 Custom, I replaced the pickups with Buddha Shark Bites and a Seymour Duncan Fat Cat in the middle, and replaced the bridge with Godo. On my Squire, again, I changed the pickups out for Buddha, rewired it for one volume and one tone because in the original position, the volume knob got in the way of my down picking. I think by the time this video goes up, the Harley Benton DC600 should also have a new set of Buddha pickups. My 71 Les Paul Custom, I only bought the body, the husk, uh, the Spurzel locking tuners, gold truss rod cover, EMG 81X, 60X set, go to hardware, they're all non-stock. Things I still want to do are replace the tuners on the Squire for Godo or Spurzel locking, and maybe take the gloss finish off the back of the Epiphone neck. So yeah, I've, I've modded guitars. Have you gigged with your Bugera amp much? I've heard they have questionable reliability. What are your thoughts? I have never gigged with the Bugera. In fact, I haven't gigged in a long time, not since college. I've never had any serious issues with mine for home recording, but I would be pretty wary of gigging with a pre-Infinium Bugera that hadn't been repaired already. I met one of the Bugera reps at Sweetwater Gear Fest last year, and even he acknowledged the reliability issues of the earlier models. The Infinium models have largely, to my knowledge at least, fixed most of these reliability issues. There was some sort of plastic clip in the early ones that was getting melted and shorting something out and they replaced it with metal or something like that. I think more than anything, it's a classic story of a product being released too early. Guitarists have long memories. The original 6262 came out in 2008, and the Infinium models came out in something like 2011, 2012. Even half a decade later, Bugera is still struggling with a damaged brand image, which is a shame because I think some of their amps are really cool, and I really like the price points. Okay, so you're a huge Metallica fan. So, thoughts on Megadeth? Eh. Metallica, yes. All day, every day. Megadeth, not so much. I have a ton of respect for Dave Mustaine as a musician, as a guitarist, as a songwriter, as the frontman for one of the biggest metal bands in the world, and now as the owner of his own beer brand. But his voice just really doesn't do it for me. I do like a few Megadeth songs, Kill the King, Peace Cells, 44 Minutes, Washington is Next, Symphony of Destruction, Sin, Prince of Darkness, like quite a few of them actually, but I don't like a high enough percentage of their overall catalog to call myself a Megadeth fan. Oh, and of course, a Tulemon. I know you're more into riffs than shreds, but I would not mind you showcasing your inner slash once in a while. My question, why not? I guess this means why don't I do more solos? I don't know, they've just never really appealed to me as a player. When I pick up a guitar, I play riffs, that's the first thing that comes into my head, and that's what I really enjoy playing. I don't really play much lead stuff, so as a result, I'm not really that good at soloing. The ones that I write tend rarely to add anything, and if they don't add anything, then I don't like putting them in, you know, serve the song. That being said, this is a demo channel, so I might start throwing more leads in, if only to create more comprehensive content. Have you ever been in a band, and if not, do you think you would ever want to join one? Currently, I do not play in a band, and I don't think that I'd want to be in a band right now. Being in a band is just incredibly time-consuming. Not that I don't enjoy it, there's nothing like playing for a live audience. It's amazing, but I just don't have enough time in the day to commit to a band, to do the YouTube thing, and to do the other projects that I have going on. I did play in a band called Roscoe when I was still at school, and we have a few demos up on SoundCloud that I'll leave links to in the description if you feel like checking it out. It's a lot different to the stuff that I play on the YouTube channel. We've got a female vocalist, and it's a lot more chill, but I think y'all will really enjoy it. The ones I had the biggest hand in writing are Into the Wild and Sarah Sastium. You should definitely give them a listen. My one request 
is that you do not judge the production quality. We had literally no idea what we were doing. I was wondering if you ever heard or tried a Chapman ML2. I'm looking to get a new guitar in the new year and I'm really torn on what to get. Tragically, I have not played a Chapman guitar yet. They look great and I love the collaborative design aspect. I really wanna try one. Right now they don't have a huge presence in the United States. Their distributor is Riff City and their retail store is somewhere in the Midwest, uh, Minnesota, I think. I am going to NAMM this year. Who knows, maybe I'll be able to talk to Rob Chapman, which would be amazing, and see if he's interested in getting a Chapman here on the channel. No promises, I mean, he's got half a million subs compared to our 3,000, but we'll see. As far as a new guitar, LTD BK600. Favorite guitar I demoed under $1,000 in 2016. After playing both sets, would you recommend changing out the 8160s for the headset? This one I've gotten a couple times. The short answer is no. If I already had an 8160 combo in a guitar, the headset is not so much better to warrant a $250 upgrade. However, if we change the starting point, like if I had an empty body or I was trying to change out passives to actives, then yes, every time I would go for the headset over the 8160, I think they're worth the extra 50 bucks. What's your cat's name? This little fluff ball is named Koshi. It's Japanese and can either mean little tiger or chamber pot, depending on how annoying she's being. Epiphone Snow Falcon Flying V? Yes, the white fingerboard looks so sick. If Epiphone keep making cool ones like this in the Brent Hines signature, they might actually convert me to a Flying V guy. As soon as they become available, I'll try to get one on here. How do you afford all this crap? Uh, the simple answer is I can't. Tears. I make a pitiful amount of money on YouTube. If I had to buy everything myself, there would be no channel. It takes a ton of time and work to put videos together to the quality that I'm happy with. And because of the relatively low sub count, it's that quality that allows me to do all these demos. So it varies from company to company. Sometimes I get sent stuff to demo that I get to keep. Sometimes it's only on loan. My relationship with Sam Ash, for example, means that I can buy and return all the guitars that you guys are asking for, which is great because especially for the bigger brands like Epiphone and LTD, I would never have access to those guitars. And trust me, a few months ago at just over a thousand subs, it took a lot of convincing to set that up. So don't ever say that I don't do anything for you guys. What do you use for string dampeners above the nut and between the tailpiece slash bridge? These are hair ties. The specific ones that I use and recommend are Goody Ouchless. I've tried a bunch and tonally these add a certain warmth and punch and really emphasize the mid-range frequencies that help your tone cut through a mix. I'm kidding, they're hair ties. They're they're just hair ties. Generally, just one on the headstock and one behind the bridge will do, but with the Bullet Strat, for example, there's two on the headstock and three or four in the trem cavity because when I stop playing, it just rings like you wouldn't believe. And the good thing about hair ties is that it's four bucks for 30 of them, so you can just use as many as you need for your situation. Your mixes always sound great. Any chance of sharing your Torpedo Live profiles? Thanks man, although I cannot take credit for the last couple mixes. They've been done by my boy Pat. He's super awesome at this stuff. And it's definitely brought the audio up a notch or two or three. If you need anything done from EDM to black metal, I definitely recommend hitting him up. His contact details are in the description. As far as the Torpedo Live goes, I kind of lucked out because I bought mine used from a studio. I don't actually use the Wall of Sound plugin. The previous owner created a ton of amazing custom impulses that he left on the unit. I've got a bunch of different mics at different positions on a Mesa 412 and an Angle 412. It hasn't really been a priority of mine to get them off there, but if there's enough interest, I may set aside some time to figure it out. Your video quality is amazing. What kind of camera are you running? I use two different cameras. For the main camera, which is what I'm using now, and for still shots of the gear, I use a Canon T3i, which is like the standard YouTuber camera. And for the close-ups and the moving gear shots, I use a camcorder. I use a, um, a Canon Vixia HRF500. I think that's what it's called. 
The T3i is by far the better camera, but the R500 has features like being able to film in 60 frames per second, image stabilization, and autofocus. So that's why I use both for different situations. It is kind of annoying how different the colors are from the footage from each camera. So eventually I do want to upgrade, but for now, that's what I'm using. I also really want to start using a fisheye lens, especially for these talking parts. I think that would look really cool. Are you planning on doing a video on the budget Will Adler signature, ESP LTD WA200 Warbird Distressed? Uh, I don't know actually. I've gotten requests for the LTD WA Warbird, which is the higher end one with the fluence pickups, but this is the first request I've gotten for that particular guitar. I think they look really cool, but I'm always a little wary of the lower end signature models. I get that it's a good way for guitarists on a budget to own their favorite artist's signature guitar, but if it's one that the artist personally never uses because it's not good enough, that's a little off-putting to me. That's why I like doing a lot of the higher-end Epiphone and LTD signature models so much. A lot of the guitarists actually use them either live or in the studio. So the WA200 is 550 new, I think, and it's a basswood body, bolt-on neck, ESP pickups, and no locking tuners. So taking that and comparing it to the higher-end ones where they have mahogany bodies, set through neck, Fishman Fluence active pickups, I could never see Willie Adler tour or record with a WA200. But that being said, when it comes down to it, it's all about what you guys wanna see and maybe more of you want demos of these guitars that aren't really on my radar. What I might start doing for future demos is polls on Facebook and Twitter. One, it's so difficult to keep a track of all the different requests that I get in all the video comments, you know, like this one. And two, it's so much better to be able to go to a distributor or manufacturer with concrete data that says, hey, look, people are interested in this product, let's make a video. Not entirely sure how the process will work yet, but there are so many requests, there are just so many requests and I'd love to get to them all, but unfortunately I am just one person. So we gotta get some sort of community prioritization going on. Plus, I think it would be really cool to get you guys more involved. So definitely, definitely let me know what you think of that. Okay, that'll do it for this January 2017 Q&A. If you've got any questions for the next one, make sure to leave them in the video comments, tweet them at me, or send me a Facebook message. As always, thanks so much for watching. Happy New Year 2017 is gonna be awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.